Well, we'll complete our introduction to Chronicles with a discussion of the theology of the book of Chronicles. And we'll start, strangely enough, with the theology of the genealogies. The first nine chapters of Chronicles begin with genealogies, and this tends not to be the most exciting reading. But something that might make it a little more interesting is to look at the theological emphases that the, theology, uh, that the genealogies uh, provide. Uh, one of the emphases is on the election of Israel. It starts with a genealogy from Adam to Israel. And that's its way of saying that Israel is a part of God's plan, that everything leads up to Israel, that God has chosen Israel to be his special possession. You also have the election of David as king. The genealogies here emphasize the tribe of Judah and the house of David. Again, because God has chosen the tribe of Judah and the house of David for a very important role in his plan. You also have an emphasis on priesthood and worship. There's an emphasis on the tribe of Levi, in, uh, which receives a whole chapter. There's mention of Saul's tribe, Benjamin, in uh, chapter 7 and in the chapter 8. There's an emphasis on renewal of and continuity with Israel's past has a list of the returning exiles. Thus, Chronicles links the post-exilic community with the election of Israel and of David. In other words, God has still chosen them to be a part of his plan. Now, only the tribes that remain faithful to Davidic kingship, that would be Judah, Levi, and Benjamin, are stressed in the genealogy of First Chronicles uh, 1 through 9. In contrast, the other tribes receive only a very short treatment, and Zebulun and Dan are omitted entirely. Well, what about the theology of the rest of the book of Chronicles, the theology of the narratives? Well, there's a theme of the unity of God's people. The chronicler emphasizes the expression, all Israel, uses that some 40 times. All Israel embraced David. All Israel fled to Judah. People from uh, Manasseh, Ephraim, and the entire remnant of Israel, it says, uh, fled to Judah. And this is a way of saying to the post-exilic audience that Judah now constitutes all Israel. And it's trying to uh, inculcate the ideal of unity among God's people. And of course, that's still is something we should try to do today. Ideal of unity should be expressed in God's people, the church. All united around David, our king. That brings us to the choice of David as another theme in Chronicles. David dominates First Chronicles, emphasizing that he's a man after God's own heart, uh, that he established the right kind of worship, that uh, David's son Solomon and the fortunes of Judah were all heirs of the uh, Davidic covenant. Indeed, the book idealizes David, stressing the positives and ignoring some of the negatives. Uh, for example, uh, it, it doesn't bother to mention that uh, David had that adulterous affair with Bathsheba. The Davidic kingdom of Judah, rather than the northern kingdom that rejected David, is what's emphasized, because in rejecting David, they also rejected Yahweh. Now, there's messianic implications in this choice and emphasis on David. Uh, apparently, the chronicler had a messianic doctrine that saw a future role of the Davidic monarchy after the exile. 
You have to understand that after the Babylonian exile, there are no more Davidic kings on the throne. But that the chronicler emphasizes the choice of David suggests that he believes that one day that God would raise up a new David in accordance with the teaching of the prophets. Certainly read from the New Testament perspective, this emphasis on David in Chronicles is to be understood in the light of Jesus Christ. A third theme in Chronicles is the uh, centrality of worship. The Ark of the Covenant, Jerusalem, the temple in Jerusalem, the sacrificial system, priests, Levitical musicians, and the Davidic king who sits on Yahweh's throne are all focuses of uh, they all focus on worshiping uh, Yahweh. Uh, Chronicles gives much more details on the preparations that David made for building the temple uh, than does Samuel and Kings. And so the lesson is that well, worship is very central to uh, uh, Israelite religion. Of course, we could ask the same thing. How central is worship to us? Is it as central to us as it was to the chronicler? Well, that's some of the themes in the book of Chronicles, and uh, that will end our discussion of this book.